I remember yeah. when the internet got a hold of that outfit mm -hmm. and they wanted to like burn us at the stake. <laughs> People Internet went wanted our heads. This was all your fault, but go ahead. <laughs> all my fault. Hi, I'm Danny Santiago. And I'm Molly Rogers. And we're the co costume designers of And Just Like, like that. that. Most people think that it's super glamorous. Like Danny and I are toasting each other with bubbles at 1 p.m., and then we're Wish. lollygagging through sacks. <laughs> And it's really quite, it's not glamorous. We love that outfit. The moment she put those colors, through, you know, tried it on and all those colors came together on her with her skin tone and the hair, we just fell in love with that outfit. Oh, those colors were so jewel, rich, rich together. Jewel, rich jewel tones on that, and, that was so nice. And that was a happy colored outfit for me. Maybe she was handling his ashes in a shoebox. I don't remember. Yeah. But that combination signified that life is starting to go on for me. Yeah. You know, that was our homage to Yves Saint Laurent. Yeah, but to like it's the a vintage. original 70s Yves Saint Laurent. That was a vintage yeah. 70s Yves Saint Laurent blouse and a skirt that we had that Again, the silhouette had a very 70s Saint Laurent vibe to it. We search and search and search, and we, I mean, that's something that we love, and that's something I feel that's part of the tradition of the show, you know, um, something that Molly and Pat had always done. They've always brought in amazing vintage pieces because it makes it one of a kind to the character. Nobody else can have it. And it really gave Carrie the style of individual fashion. You know, she had her own look. It gave her her own look. She never wore anything that looked like it was from the runway, right off the runway. I found this really interesting. Yeah. What happened here? Well, the script called for Carrie to wake up the next morning and not wear what she had on the night before, but to pull something out of her closet that she would just go back to her Mr. Big and hers apartment in. And we, Sarah Jessica, Danny, and I were in love with this, I don't know what you call that dress, but it was white satin and it had red felt or velvet roses on it. On it. Uh -huh. And it was so stunning on her. So we all decided, yeah, great idea, love that. And Carrie being Carrie in this outfit, she goes to the bodega to get her coffee for right. the morning. And, and Michael uh, Patrick King came in. Yeah. Well, he came into the room and saw the picture of the white satin dress and was mm -hmm. like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. This is an opportunity. <laughs> and we were like, what? <laughs> like, I, that didn't cross my mind to put her right. in something quirky. Yeah. I thought, throw something elevated on. Right. Then when we thought about that was his intention, that she really comes out, and it's a moment, we were like, OK, grab the crinoline. Yeah. Well, well, well. This was a stunt. <laughs> <sighs> wow. For me, that is quintessential Carrie silhouette, Oscar yeah. de la Renta. Yeah. We called it the Magnolia. Dress because of the print of it. And it was something that we were looking for for the scene. We knew that it had to be something really special and we hadn't, we didn't really have anything specific at that point. And then we went to talk to Sarah Jessica about it in the trailer. And she kind of said, well, what about Oscar? You know, Fernando Garcia. And he was two blocks away from the trailer. We were in Soho Lucky. shooting. I mean, she wore that silhouette in the McDonald's mm -hmm. with the Russian. Right. We had a great relationship with him on the original show. And now it's back again. <laughs> so we've got a story on this because we sort of put this outfit together. And it, in a lot of ways, it wasn't what we typically would have put her in because it is very simple. There's, you know, it's plain and it's not necessarily something that we thought it looked like a Carrie put together outfit. And if you can see, we the jacket we didn't tailor it purposely for that because we wanted her to sort of hide in it a little bit. You know what I mean? It kind of gave her that like she could be a little bit, you know. Um, kind of comfort herself and just sort of hide away like you would just cover yourself in a blanket type of thing. So we didn't do a lot of tailoring for this. Jacket. I remember when the internet got a hold of that outfit mm -hmm. and they wanted to like burn us at the stake. 
They happened a lot. were so <laughs> angry that we would put her in a low shoe like that, put a jacket that was too long in the sleeve. Her hair would not be really, like she is, she isn't grieving. She's not thinking about She is not styling herself. Up. She's not styling herself in this look. This is the episode that Cynthia Nixon directed. Yeah. When she walked on set in her, you know, clothing for that scene, inside the Indian clothing shop that Seema and Carrie walk around in, mm -hmm. I walked to set with her and I was like, do not look around in this store because you're gonna see something <laughs> that you're gonna like better than what you're wearing. <laughs> and those things aren't cheap. Yeah. And she was like, okay. And then she walked in and she was like, ooh, what about that one? And I was like, don't do it. Don't look, don't look. There's so many pretty things there. Oh, and wow. she stuck with the original. Yeah. The internet went wild for that one. They went crazy for it. Again, because this was shot on the streets, the paparazzis got this shot. So it wasn't even when it aired. It was on all these different um, fashion sites that she's wearing this dress and what was the dress. And people identified it to be um, Norma Kamali. And I think within like a day and a half, they sold every single dress out. Her body in that dress is, it just says everything. A New York woman out on a night. Right. And the lighting behind her so that beautiful. they lit that alleyway. You know what alleys are like in New York? They're not golden. <laughs> one of my favorite outfits. Yes. One of I should our be favorite outfits. Meh, meh, yeah. Because of the scene. But right. I'm but eh, eh. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was fall. The perfect dress for the scene. And we had so many contenders for it. Yeah. I would call Every brand. like Dior. And I would say to them, I need a black dress. And, and I can't tell you why. why. We couldn't say why. And couldn't they say. would say, a cocktail dress. And I would be like, no, <laughs> something a little <laughs> And some people were like, I'm not sending you guys a black dress. If I get on that show, I right. want it to be, get a black they dress anyway. Peacock <laughs> dress, you know, they want magenta <laughs> or floral or something else, you know, they all try to push other things that they wanted, but they didn't really understand what it was that we were looking for. The ballerina vibe, it's sedated, it's quiet, it's somber, but it's yeah. 100 carry. 100%. And then, that pizza. Little, that little plate that we kept that calling that hat the plate, it just framed the whole thing. It framed her face and it also allowed her to sort of hide with her acting. You know what I mean? It gave her something to be able to be solemn and hide and sort of, uh, it really helped, I think, within the scene and how she sort of acted that scene And out. I adore Sarah Jessica for wearing these $10 shoes that one of the shoppers found in a thrift store. <laughs> she adored them. She wanted to burn them at the end, because this took, what, three days, two three days. days? She was like, those shoes were so painful, because they were made out of cardboard or something. She, I love this picture of yeah. these three girls. Yeah. That is classic Charlotte Goldenblatt, yeah. looking mm -hmm. like Jackie O in Christian Dior. They sent that from the runway show. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful, beautiful dress. She's very Yes, Jackie we didn't get it out of a museum in Orlando, <laughs> did we? No, we did. <laughs> and that's classic Miranda. Yeah. It, she has such a beautiful, beautiful long, long neck, neck, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. and you the do a deep V on her, so and a, you threw a shoulder pad in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good one, approved. That's the day that we did that fake outfit, too, to trick everyone. Yeah, yeah, when she walked out with, with the big. Yeah. And she has the bird hat on, the and she has this polka dot skirt, and she's with him. Yes. And we just thought, you know, love that shoe. Kind of take the take it off into a different direction because people had so many ideas of what those scenes were going to be that we were doing it. So just to sort of throw off the scent, we decided let's her put her in this and have her walk on the street with Big in it. Got a lot of a, attention. It was a bird on her head again, and people thought, oh, are they renewing her vows? Are they what, what's going on there? Why would she? be wearing a bird on her head again. It got a lot, a lot of attention on it. And that was a dress, that a vintage dress again. And then we used a pair of Miu Miu uh, heels here. Oh, right. That she actually from wore the... 
when she rang the bell at the um, New York Stock Exchange. In it's, the original show. In the original show. Ho, 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 yeah, one of my favorites. That's one of Molly's favorites. This was Danny's vintage dress. Yeah. Carrie Fyatt. Has like a little bustle on the back of it, this beautiful satin bustle, which looked beautiful because in the scene she ends up laying down on this gorgeous pillow that actually Molly designed and um, the draping of the of the little tail in the back, it just works It was so perfect for her to there. sit on the floor. Uh -huh. She instinctively knows how to how place, to place herself. herself. Yeah. It works the garment, she cut that sweatshirt, sweatshirt. that I found. Yeah. In the fitting, she'll lay it on the floor. She'll say, everybody stand back. I've got scissors. <laughs> she likes to cut them herself. She likes, she likes to, to, to do the neck. Yeah. yeah, and then she tied it in a knot in the back, rolled up the sleeves, because it's big on her. Yeah. And it was such a great thing to pair with that beautiful vintage dress of Danny's. Yeah. The People internet wanted our heads. That actually is something that one of the writers used to do, go outside and smoke and think about scripts and blah, 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 and didn't want any smoke on them. So they would put all kinds of things on gloves, right. hoodies, yeah. and Grey Gardens. Grey Gardens, Edie Beale. We were so, you all know, day long. All day long. Once we saw that, we were like, it's it's Edie. The code name for this scene, so no one would know what was happening, was Waterworks. Yeah. Because she ends up in the shower with him. And we had her in this beautiful dress, one of the first dresses you found. Yeah. At the outlet mall in Florida. Gorgeous. We loved it. She loved it. Everybody loved it. Until Michael Patrick King came in and said, when she's on the shower floor, we'll never see her shoes. Because the skirt will And it was shoes. a very important story part. Because yeah. the shoes are supposed to lose the blue dye in the circle. So at the last minute, it was a Tibby pant. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tibby though. Yeah. There you are in all your glory, the Versace gown. It's great to pull that stuff out of the past. Yeah and yeah. feature it and eat popcorn in it. Sitting in the window, classic Carrie. Eating chippy pot popcorn. Yeah, this was all <laughs> your fault, but go ahead. <laughs> all my fault. This outfit got a lot of controversy. Again, they wanted our heads for it. This was a dress that um, had no label on it. We had it in our room for the fittings. It was something that was bought in a thrift store. Once the paparazzis had it out and it was coming up on Instagram, people kept identifying it as two different types of dresses. There was a dress that was purchased in Forever 21, and there was a dress that came from an Indian designer, and um, nobody knew what this dress was, where, where it came from. So of course, people were all up in arms because why is she wearing fast fashion? And there were so many different articles written about it and stuff like that. But we just didn't know. I mean, we just knew that it was a dress that we liked and something that we wore and it didn't have a label in it. This for me was one of my favorite pieces of the show. I think this was such a score also because, you know, it was a Valentino Couture gown. We showed it to Sarah Jessica in one of our fittings and we were like, we showed it to her, she fell in love with it, and we are like, do we need to bring anything else in? And she was like, no, that's the dress. We're both excited about season two, and we're gonna try to serve it up again. And yeah. I'm sure we will, because we're gonna go to all the honey holes, under every rock, we're gonna have a blast. Look out for season two. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.